Welcome back to the Film Cynic. Stephen Bryan on CFAX 1070 talking about movies, television, and pop culture. And we're going to slide right now into a DVD review. Who wants a DVD review? Man, who wants some Kool-Aid, Brian? <laughs> Apparently the guy in the tunnel who ever asked that question did. <laughs> um, okay, what do we got for us right now? We got Sherlock Holmes coming out on this Tuesday yes. from our friends at Warner Brothers. Uh, it's the, I don't know, it's Guy Ritchie giving Sherlock Holmes the Born Identity treatment, I think. <laughs> This was a movie that I was really excited when I heard it was coming out like about a year ago and I saw the trailer and I'm like, okay, Robert Downey Jr., Sherlock Holmes, that's really cool. And Guy Ritchie directing it, double cool yeah. because I've been a fan of most of his work. A couple of movies, maybe not, but all in all, I like what Guy Ritchie does. Yes. So this was his, his version of the Sherlock Holmes story and it was kind of cool because it wasn't an origin story, which is what you would normally expect in the first movie. Yeah of a series would be like how Sherlock Holmes came to be or why Sherlock Holmes is important. Yeah, if anything, is actually this is the last days of his career. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is them, uh, uh, Watson and Holmes, coming, coming, coming to the end of their, their, their partnership, and so Holmes trying to figure out what he's going <laughs> to do with himself. Which I thought was kind of cool. You kinda, the movie kind of starts in the middle of an investigation or mm -hmm. near the end of it, so you're kind of just thrown into Sherlock Holmes' world, and you figure him out as the movie progresses and why he is who he is and his relationship with Jude Law, who plays Dr. Watson. And I quite enjoyed the movie when it's all said and done. Yes. And I kind of forget the entire details of the, of the story because it was a few months ago when I had watched it. Well, let's see. So can you give me a little bit of a refresher? So uh, we do jump right in the middle of an investigation. Holmes and Watson are racing along with the Scotland Yard cops on their way to something. Okay, and there's, it turns out uh, this, uh, there's this cult that's been bumping off girls, young women, um, and they manage to thwart this last human sacrifice that they're going to do. And it turns out that the person leading this cult is this guy, Lord Blackwood. Uh, who is part of the secret society that practices magic. It's sort of like the Masons meets... Uh, Stonecutters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, so, um, and then, uh, so we, they put uh, Lord Blackwood to death, um, and he brags to everybody that he's going to come back, and sure enough, a few days later, he comes back. He apparently blasts his way out of his tomb, and uh, he starts doing more crimes. And, uh, and Watson, who was f ready to wipe his hands of everything and walk away, realizes that because he was the one on, on scene who pronounced Lord Blackwood dead, he can't walk away quite yet to go get married. Um, and so him and, and Holmes partner up for one last time uh, for yeah. one last little investigation. Things sort of spin out of control, and, and there's a number of murders that lead up to, uh, eventually Lord Blackwood is, is, uh, is trying to take over all of England, uh, um, through his magic cult of uh, <laughs> magic users, they use the black arts, and um, and Holmes is all the all the all the while trying to figure out what's going on and th and, and eventually solving the mystery um, with the with the aid of uh, of uh, John Watson, and um, and yeah, so it's it's I mean it's a it's a it's a it's a fast paced adventure. Um, but still with a sort of slow, methodical style that yeah. uh, Sherlock Holmes is known for. I mean, despite some of the changes and the updates that they did for Holmes, I think all of the crew and, I mean, the cast uh, agrees that there is nothing that is actually in contradiction to anything that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote um, in the original books. I mean, even the martial arts, everybody's saying, oh, he didn't do martial arts. Well... They always understated any of the action sequences or fight sequences he might have gotten into in any of his adventures. Um, in some of the later books, they do talk about this thing called Bartitsu, um, which they changed to Baritsu for the movie, um, which was this um, jujitsu der derivative that was created by this British guy who spent some time in Japan. Oh, very and it was interesting. sort of this gentlemanly martial art. So they give Sherlock Holmes the ability to do it. And I, that's especially one of the aspects that I really did enjoy, because going into it, as a Guy Ritchie film, I was expecting a lot more fast-paced action and more like Snatch and Lock and Stock, which would not work when I look back at it. Not quite. Which wouldn't work with this story, because Sherlock Holmes is not Snatch, and it's not Lock and Stock. So to have it have this from a more methodical approach to the, um, the figuring out of the problems, I thought was really good. But I also like the way he counteracted that with the uh, fighting mm -hmm. and the way that they had this process that Sherlock Holmes went through in a fight sequence where he would, in his mind, imagine what he was going to do. And there's this really great way of showing it with slow motion. And he would kind of talk his way through, oh, I'm going to hit the guy here and then hit him here. And mm -hmm. then he would go and do it. And it was like, that was a really great way of, of doing action in that, in that movie because it showed you the, the approach of Sherlock Holmes. How he has this ability to sort of see yeah. insightfully into what's, what he's and doing. And then, but, but put it into action, which, right. really wor which really worked well for me. Yeah, now actually, um, Guy Ritchie talks about this. Uh, well, I'll get to 
the, the sort of the features later, but he talks about this as a uh, as Holmes vision. <laughs> and uh, what was interesting that I found out is that they shot this with a camera called a Phantom. Yeah, it's a camera that was invented just to document the uh, ignition of the space shuttle, just so they could watch how everything was uh, was was exploding. Um, and uh, so it shoots at three thousand frames a second. That's in contrast to the twenty four frames a yeah. second uh, that film is supposed to be shot at. So it's absolutely able to capture every single aspect of all these things that are going on. And I also found out that, really, they were doing full contact fighting for pretty much, like, 80% of this movie. And Downey Jr. himself, who is a... He has actually been studying uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu for, like, five years now. Oh, wow. So he's actually really good. And, and Guy Ritchie himself has been studying jujitsu for a really long time. So the two of them together were just sort of bandying up this this whole new martial art that they So when, when when Sherlock Holmes gets hit, he's actually getting hit. Yeah, when you see his face kind of blah, 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 like that's for real. I like, guess you I mean, can't really fake that, no yeah. matter how good you are with your stunt people. Because that's one of the things you really pulls you into the movie is when they do this really extreme slow motion fighting and he does get There's hit. Some major contact. And happening. it shows that you're like, well, you, you can't fake that. So yeah. now it's good to know that he actually is getting punched. Yeah. Way to oh, go, yeah. Robert Downey. So, yeah, so great performances all around. I mean, everybody sort of thought, like, well, wait a second. They got Jude Law, the British guy, to play <laughs> John Watson, and they got the American to play Sherlock Holmes, and I thought it was spot on. I mean, they, they managed to sort of reconstitute John Watson a little bit from the sort of uh, portly tag-along idiot. Oh, well, not exactly an idiot, but, no. you know, sort of uh, it, compared to, to Holmes, to more of actual contemporary and, and equal. Yeah. I, I thought the casting was great. Like, I was a little surprised that, you, like you said, an American was playing Sherlock Holmes, but then it's Robert Downey. Yeah, Junior, who's apparently can do no wrong in the last four or five years of yeah, his acting career. On. So I was like, I he's the only person I could see playing that role that's not a British actor. Yes, and Mark Strong does a really great job in there. I'm a big fan of Mark Strong. I know you are. Um, and he's coming up, and he's gonna he's gonna keep doing better and better. So as Lord Blackwood, he's really really great. And there's a Canadian contingent in there with yes, Rachel McAdams. Rachel has, uh, uh, the Isabel, girl, yeah, <laughs> uh, Isabel Adams, I believe it is. Um, she's yeah, she's uh, she's very good as well. I mean, it's weird because she doesn't have any accent at all. She's playing an American, yes, uh, for, from New Jersey, even though <laughs> she's got like the perfect like Ilderton accent or wherever it is. She's from in Ontario. Um, yeah, so um, my favorite thing about this though, and this is why I love Warner Brothers so much now, and uh, is the this maximum movie mode. As far as so, right in my hands, I've got the Blu-ray. Uh, it's got the, the digital copy and everything, but it's got this thing called Maximum Movie Mode, which is this super ultra mega commentary that, that, that they do. So you're actually watching the movie, and the, like, the picture will fade back, and then there's Guy Ritchie standing there in front of two giant screens, and the movie will keep playing, and he's talking about how he approached some of it, and then he sort of throws to maybe a little video in the background. Um, so it, it's, just, it's just the most in-depth uh, way to to approach a film. I've watched the maximum movie mode for Watchmen as well with, with Zack Snyder, and that was amazing. I mean, it, it only really works with the guys who are very very passionate about the filmmaking. Yeah. Um, and Guy Ritchie obviously is such. Um, what did I write? I actually wrote this down. So I was going to say it was so sweet it nearly put me in a diabetic coma. Uh, but it's just it's just rife with information. There's just so much info in there um, to glean if you are at all at least remotely interested in this movie. The getting the the the, the edition with with the maximum movie mode will make everything so much better. Um, it'll tell you every inch of everything you need to know from all of the experts, the cast, the crew, everybody who had anything to do with the movie. Does it take longer to watch the movie in maximum movie mode? It does, because occasionally Guy will be like, okay, can you stop that, please? And the movie will stop, and he'll go over and throw over to another like another image that's going on in this okay. other screen. So the, the maximum movie mode is for the person who has obviously already seen the movie. Yes. And liked it enough to want to know more about it. Mm -hmm. Do not watch the movie for the first time on maximum I'm, movie no, mode, because do then it will... Pretty much ruin the movie experience for you. But yeah, it's 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 like it's like commentary, but like ten times better. So um, for those who wanted to get deeper into it, that's the way to go. So I mean, I, I unreservedly give it a keeper, hundred percent. It's like I, the the movie was great enough on its own, but with that feature, it's over the top, fantastic. So definitely a keeper. Yeah, I really enjoyed the film. I've liked it more than I thought I was going to, and I'm going to give it a keeper, even though I haven't seen the Blu-ray disc, but I'm going to borrow this from you, and I'm going to watch it and bring it back. All right, sounds good. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to take a news break. When we come back, we're going to review The Blind Side. Stay with us.